From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Rob Elliott here, Mr. Dollar. Uh, Century style? I know, Mr. Elliott. How are you today? Terrible, Mr. Dollar. I feel terrible. I'm calling from the district attorney's office. You there about Sheldon Forbes? Yes. I had no idea I'd have to act. They want me to sign a complaint. Well, that's pretty usual, Mr. Elliott. Forbes admitted taking the money from your firm. He's guilty as charged. You're the injured party. They want to get on with the prosecution. Oh, dear. So you do whatever they say, Mr. Elliott. Well, will it affect my payment at all? A payment of the claim? No, not a bit. Your check's on the way to you right now. Oh, that's a relief. Now, how about you? Are you going back to Hartford? Uh, Should I thank you now? You can thank me, but I'm not going back. What? My job's just beginning. I have to recover the money for the insurance company. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter theft of nearly $5,000. Expenses continued. Item four, I think it is. $10 deposited on a rented car. First stop, Central Division Headquarters, where I was informed that Sheldon Thomas Forbes had been formally arraigned and was being held in the city jail. Second stop, an address on 56th Street. Second floor next to a dental laboratory, and on the door it said Edward Gumby, attorney at law. And below it said, walk in. So I did. Uh, hello out there. Mr. Gumby? Yes, sir. Come on in. It's warmer in here. Edward Gumby was standing in front of a gas heater in the inner office, which consisted of nothing more than a telephone, a desk, and a dozen law books. He was a medium-sized man, about 40 or so, a little tired, a little seedy, but he had a nice grin. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Gumby. You don't know me. I'm with Continental Adjustment Bureau, representing Delaware Eastern Liability in this Forbes matter. Oh, yes, 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 of course. I understand you're representing Sheldon Forbes, is that right? Well, I don't know whether it is or not, Mr. Dollar. I happened to be in magistrate's court this morning when Forbes was arraigned. I took him on because he didn't have counsel and the court appointed me. I don't know whether he took me on or not. Sit down, sit down. Oh, thanks. (sighs) New York is the coldest city in the world. Absolutely the coldest when it's cold. (laughs) Yeah, it sure is. Look, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, Mr. Gumby. Time? (laughs) I've got time, boy. That's all I've got. What's on your mind? Your client, mostly. He's admitted guilt. But, of course, we're interested in recovering the money he stole. $4,285. Yeah. I can't blame your company for that. Well, prosecution could probably be stopped if we made recovery. Hmm. Sure, sure. I thought I'd tell you this in in case you had any influence on Forbes. Well, I appreciate that, Mr. Dollar. It's very understandable. But as I say, I was court appointed. I really haven't talked to him yet. So I'll have to confess I don't have any influence with him at all yet. Struck me as a nice sort of chap. Mm -hmm. Don't quite get it myself. Probably an explanation for it. Married once, I understand, and widowed right after the war. He worked for Century Styles about five years. Have you talked to the police yet? No. I understand they're going to work on it today. Maybe they'll have a little more information for you about the recovery. (laughs) Probably find the money in an old sock or something like that. That's the way these things generally run, you know. I agreed with Mr. Gumby. That was truly the way these kind of cases usually ran. And I was a little surprised that afternoon when I spoke to the officers at the city jail. They reported that a complete search of Forbes' apartment and automobile unearthed nothing like the missing money. They further reported that they had found no reliable evidence of any material possessions that the money could have been spent for. My next stop, city jail. He won't tell you anything. Hmm? Kept his trap shut all the time he's been in here. As far as we've been able to find out, no previous record, no background... Been checking his prints with Washington. I don't know about this one. You know, he acts cop-wise. Know what I mean? Won't give a police officer the time of day. That means he could have been in before. Now, on the other hand, it could mean he's just scared. That too. Well. Well, how what? 
Take it easy, Forbes. This is Mr. Dollar. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Forbes. Hi. See you later, Dollar. Yeah, thanks, Sergeant. Just give a yell when you're finished. Right. They treating you okay? Swell. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anybody. Why not? I just don't want to see anybody. That's all. Now, you're acting like a baby, Forbes. You'll have to talk to somebody. Don't lecture me, Mr. Insurance Investigator. I've had all the lectures I want from myself. I don't know why you're here. I I thought we settled our business yesterday. The whole thing's just a technicality. I've been arraigned. They've got my confession. I'll go into a court, and they'll give me the business. What are you doing in here, anyway? Swell day to be outside. Yeah, it is. Want to smoke? Oh, thanks. Well, why are you here? To help you out of this mess, if you'll let me. (laughs) That's funny. Not a bit. Why should you want to help me? Well, it's not because I have any use for you, mister. You're nothing to me but a guy who stole a pile of money. My job is to get it back, $4,285. Oh, that. Yes, that. How about it, Forbes? Isn't it enough that I'm in jail? That that I'll go to prison? That's enough for the police, but not for my insurance company. Oh, it's too bad about your insurance company. No, it's too bad about you. You're being foolish. A hold or partial recovery can have a great deal to do with what happens to you from now on. Three years is the minimum sentence, you know. Twelve years maximum. Now, is it worth it? Sure. Sure it's worth it. And I don't want to be foolish anymore. But I have been foolish. I took it and I spent it. Every dime of it. There's no way to pay it back. What did you spend it on? It uh, doesn't make any difference. It may make a lot of difference. You can redeem it, turn it back. No, I can't. Why did you take the money? All right, look, your salary's close to 100 a week. You're single. Wasn't that enough to live on? Why don't you get out of here? I don't have anything to tell you. Ever been in trouble before? Huh? Under another name in another state? No, They no. consider backgrounds like that when a man comes up to be sentenced. Forbes, this is your first offense. I know. Are you trying to shield someone? Why don't you go away? Have you been trying the market? Did you gamble? No, no. Just just leave me alone. I won't tell you a thing. If you bought something with it or gave it to someone, if it can be recovered in some part. No, no, I tell you. Just go away and leave me alone. I'd like to. Believe me, I would. You're a thief, Forbes, and you're going to get what's coming to you, but I can't leave you alone. Listen. No, you listen to me. If I don't get the information I want from you, I'll get it elsewhere. I'm going to be very honest with you. Eastern Delaware wrote a comprehensive policy on century styles promising to indemnify them in full for every loss caused by fire or theft on their premises. In case you didn't know, Forbes, an insurance company won't take the word of some guy sitting in a jail cell, sitting in a jail cell feeling sorry for himself where there's cash to be recovered. Now, you swiped it within the last month. You have something to show for it somewhere, somehow. Whatever you spend it on or whoever you spend it on, remember that that money is the same as stolen property. A car, a diamond ring, or something. Now, if you give it to someone or spend it, when it wasn't yours, it's still redeemable, and we mean to redeem it. All right, now, what do you have to say? This won't do you any good. Don't, don't try to bulldoze me. I'm no punk caught crawling into a drugstore window late at night. I'm a college graduate. I've been in the business world ten years or better. I know what I want to tell you and what I want to keep to myself, and I don't want to talk to you about this. You or anybody else. I can't make it any clearer than that, do you understand? And there's no way or no person who can make me talk about it. I took the lousy money, I've admitted that. I did a bad job of it. You caught me. I confessed, and you've got me. Now, what more is there? That's the whole story. Okay. Have it your way, Forbes. Go away. Just go away. On my way out, I saw his attorney, Edward Gumby, on his way in to see Forbes. I waited around the sergeant's desk. Accidentally, on purpose, I glanced at the admitted visitor's register. Only two people had contacted Forbes since his arrest, Gumby and myself. That struck me as odd. A glance at his folder named no close relatives, named no one, in fact. I was thinking about that when Gumby came out from his visit. 
Gumby looked worn out. Uh, hiya. Hi. How'd you do? Not so good. Hey, tell me something. He asked you to contact a girl or anyone? Nope. I don't think he has a girl. I don't think he has anybody. You want some coffee? Yeah, good idea. We slushed across the street and found a diner. Expense account item five forty-two cents. Coffee and sinkers for Ed Gumby and myself. I think you're going to strike out, Dollar. I already have. And I think I have too. Huh? You know what I've been talking to him about in there all this time? The same thing as you restitution. But he won't open his mouth about it. He did say one thing though. He wants me to waive a jury trial and go up for sentencing. What? Yeah. Plead guilty and take it. He's sure to get at least three years. What can I do? Yeah. Got any ideas? Oh, I've got a lot of ideas, Dollar, and all of them make me sick inside. That boy's not a criminal. He took that money because he was desperate about something. You know that from the awkward way he took it. He spent it on something, and he won't talk about it. But now he's about to ruin his whole life, in spite of what you or I or anybody else tries to do for him. All he has to do is give back the money or promise restitution or call up a friend and borrow it. With his clean background, the court had listened to a mercy plea. You told him all this? I told him. I told him and you told him, and what does he do? He waves his right. I tell you, I'm going to hate to file this waiver, but I've got to do it. Yeah, and how you feel? More coffee? No. No, thanks. Dollar, you know what Forbes is? What? He's something I call a, a calendar job. A calendar job? Yeah. 33 years old. Now, now think about that. Born with one war just ended. Raised in a depression and then bangle. Another war. You might say the first 25 years of his life, nothing but war and depression. Or the effects thereof. A calendar job. Well, apparently it's what he wants. But, Mr. Dollar, I'm going to hate to see him go to prison. You know something, Mr. Gumby? So am I. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Forbes matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a sudden twist in the case that throws all the usual theories right out the window. The unexpected. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.